I love about construction is that it's all about people and it's all about relationships and it's bringing a whole series of people together to achieve a common goal. It's something tangible, so you're working on a project that you see the transformation, you see something on paper or on the screen and then you see it transform into you know, a built project. What do you think are the key skills that make someone successful in commercial construction? Good organisation, strategic skills, definitely communication. Communication is a massive part of the role, so being able to connect with you know, subcontractors, to your clients, to key stakeholders. Those skills that you think make someone successful in construction, do you think there's a gender requirement on those skills? The skills for the construction industry are gender non-specific. The basic skills that you need are, are in everybody. The industry is actually quite well set up for both gender roles because you're quite focused on a clear um, common goal and you know, it's bringing people together, whether they're male or female or different backgrounds, you've got a very clear common goal that you work towards as a team. So it actually should be quite easy um, and that, yeah, gender really shouldn't come into it at all. And in actual fact, we're a better industry and with my role being in charge of nearly 200 staff, we're actually a better business in the greater diversity that we have because the more people that we have with, you know, that have the common basic skills but slightly different ideas, thought processes, etc., it allows me in my position to be best informed to make the decisions on our way forward, setting the vision for the business and the better our outcomes are, absolutely. Recognising that a successful career in construction should not be driven by gender is not enough to drive change in female representation. So how do we start bringing more women into the industry? How do we get more young girls to consider construction as a career option? And what can construction organisations do to support increased numbers of women in this field? We're now looking to target females and girls in high school. What's really fascinating is, is that when they get exposed to the various sectors or different parts of the um, property industry across property management, legal, design, construction, more than 50% of the cohort, whether it's in New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, SA, WA, navigate to construction. Where we're seeing the disruptor now, which I think is really disappointing, is mum and dad. So they then go home, talk to mum and dad about this wonderful industry that they've been part of and that they've seen, and mum and dad turn around and say, you know, that's a misogynistic industry, that's very male dominant, you can't do that, you need to go off and study law, medicine, or whatever, the, or something else. I think at the moment the thoughts around construction is quite trade focused and, and centred, so I think there needs to be perhaps some work done on marketing the construction industry, that there are professional roles within construction as well, and I think a lot of school leavers are still influenced by their parents. And their parents may not see the construction industry as something to aspire to um, because they have those perceptions uh, around you know, trades, etc. which trades are a big and important part of the industry, but there's such a wider a range of roles within the industry as well. Uh, there is obviously the construction side, the management of construction, but then you've got safety, you've got design, you've got financial, legal aspects, so there's a big broad range within the industry that you can sort of specialise in. So for me, the, the passion is all about increasing participation, getting the best and brightest minds, some great diversity in problem solving, and opening up a pathway for females that traditionally hasn't been there. And then as a father of two daughters, you can probably add that in too. I, I see the creativity, the skill set, the problem solving skills that they have, you know, they've got a lot to offer. And I'm sure there are a lot of fathers and mothers that would say that about their daughters too, you know. So I just need those mothers and fathers to go, the construction industry is actually okay, it's safe, it's good, they're, they're not going to be you know, bullied for their gender, let them go, give them a chance. I remember being in high school and sort of going, yes, I'd, I'd like to pursue a field in engineering and unfortunately, you know, that's, it's not a popular thing. So with STEM programs, especially up and coming in schools, I think that's providing a lot of good opportunities to just young people in general that there are other fields, you know, women can be tradies and women can work in construction if they wanted to.
What was it about commercial construction that interested you? Why did you get involved in working in construction? So I studied a degree in um, civil and architectural engineering um, at the University of Adelaide and there was a requirement to fulfil work experience and Sarah's at the time working at the uni and still are actually, offered a final year student a 12 week placement. We, you know, went through bouts of, you know, quick interview and everything and I managed to land the work experience role. It then turned into a grad position with Sarah's. It was the first year of them holding a construction graduate program and that rolled into essentially a full-time position here. Female representation in commercial construction sits around 12%, so that's fairly low. So you must be one of a few sort of working on site as a female? Yes, so in our particular team, um, I am the only female on site. Uh, you'll probably find a few more females if you were to go into, say, our head office. But being on site and being the only female is something that I not so much have come to terms with, but understood when I was taking on this role. There is just that awareness, you know, even so much as they have to provide a, a toilet because there is just one female on site, which, you know, they may not have typically done if it was an all male sort of a site. But I, I enjoy like being here. And it's again, if I was to pursue what I'd originally studied at university in as an engineer, I'd probably be in a really similar position just in an office. The controls are there, the, the measures are there, the level of respect for females. They're seen as being a part of the industry now, not as a disruptor or why are you here. As a young female, do you ever get any pushback from guys on site? You know, if you're project managing them and coordinating their time, they might be older than you, you know, they may have been on site longer than you and you're a female, yeah. do you feel that pushback? You know, sometimes it can be a little intimidating to have to go up to the trades and, you know, give them instruction that, you know, I probably either received from someone in my team higher up and just having to convey the information and just hoping that they take it well. And a lot of the time, you know, it's just, everyone's working, we're on the same team, we're all trying to achieve the same goal. And if they're receiving, you know, any sort of instructions, I don't think there is so much of a pushback, you know, even if it wasn't coming from me, if they've just got an issue in general, like it would have, it could have come back to anyone. The culture in the industry can be quite intimidating at times. Um, and that's, you know, for young males as well, entering the industry as well as young females. Even getting out on site and doing walk rounds and wandering around, just having that, you know, open communication with the guys and just showing them that, you know, just a human being at the end of the day. But it's, it, it's interesting and I see it in our business. So our QHSE manager, her name's Dina, when I came on board as Sarah CEO, she was a key person that I brought across to the business to obviously manage what is a critical, critical field for us. It was really interesting in a, in a business like Sarah, you know, six years ago, Dina coming into the business for some of the older sort of site supervisor, site foreman in, in the business, it was confronting on two fronts. One being that she was female, the other being that she was younger. However, what was fascinating is, is that particularly when the, you know, the older gentlemen of the business face, you know, audits or have issues and they see the value that Dina brings, that stigma's completely gone, it, it vanishes. And they came up through a time where you know, there were no females in the industry. So for them, a female is, is a new and confronting thing, whereas generally our male staff that are 35 years and younger have grown up with generally mum working, um, female participation in, across all industries being promoted. So for them, it's just normal. They don't look at an individual from a gender viewpoint. They look at an individual as to what they bring. I think what's equally important are the young grads that you know, particularly the younger females, because the difference in age is less. They go, oh, well, Mandy doesn't look that much older than me. She can do it, so therefore I can do it. Then they look at Mel and go, yeah, wow, together with Dina in quite a senior position. Wow, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a career for me. Can you tell me about some of the challenges that face women in construction and attracting more women into construction? Flexibility at the moment is is a challenge. Um, so women, I guess, in society considered the main caregivers. 
So when they choose to have a family, it can be difficult to balance, obviously, uh, work in the construction industry, which is generally high pressure deadlines and longer hours with starting a family. So changing perhaps work policy around that and making things uh, easier for women to transition into being a mother and then back into the workforce without sort of any detriment to their career progression is an mm. important thing. But also um, encouraging uh, men too to be able to take on that role of being perhaps a primary caregiver or allowing more options. And do you think if a man working in construction were to take time off to be the primary caregiver, how would that be perceived? Um, I think you'd need to be in the right workplace. So I think part of it too is seeking out workplaces that do value those things and are open to changing the norm. And I think that's all about um, diversifying the workforce in general and that gender balance uh, will create change um, through that. Yeah, mm. hopefully organically, yeah. What do you sort of hope for for the future for construction? Definitely hope to see more women involved and that uh, I guess women are normalised so that it, it's not a novelty as such for people to walk on site and, and see a woman there involved in the construction process. If we're trying to promote more women in construction, you know, there is then the requirement of a counterbalance that some of those men will miss out. How do we help support them so that they come with us on this journey? It's, it's really interesting because your question alludes to this issue of quotas and setting a quota around females into the industry and preferencing them. The challenge for our industry going forward is, is that the talent pool is always going to be challenged, um, particularly with the continual sort of growth of the industry. So it's not so much about males missing out, it's how we actually attract more talent to actually participate. So bringing in females is just, and preferencing and trying to promote females into the industry is just increasing a talent pool that's actually necessary. So I don't see that there is going to be an issue where males are going to miss out over the next five years to a female. It's more so that we need the females to complement, make the talent pool bigger than what it currently is. Now we're seeing, you know, the cracks open. And for me, it's really important that we don't just wait for them to organically, we get in there and wedge them open and, and encourage. And, you know, the, I, I often say to, to our team and have for, uh, you know, the last 10 or 15 years is that for so long to have 50% of the population not, you know, as a key consideration is just ludicrous. Another industry that has not traditionally had strong female representation is agriculture. According to the Department of Agricultural Figures, women comprise an estimated 32% of workers in the industry. However, a gender balance is slowly forming, with women currently comprising 55% of all students studying agricultural science at university which is a huge change from as recently as 1994, when women weren't permitted to list their legal status as a farmer. A lot of the farming situations and the traditional nature of our town, you know, we've got lots of boys do sciences and go on the farm, girls, you don't do that. You go and get a job at the, the bank or at the council office, or you go and pursue nutrition or something else. A lot of those older beliefs have had to be dispelled because of, you know, things like technology have really made a significant difference in that area. And there's a whole lot more that goes into planting a crop now than ever before. Within ag, there's more, um, you know, there's a lot more technology in the space now. So, and, and anyone can do it. Like it's not certainly not a man's thing. And there's more. Uh, ladies getting involved in agronomy and that sort of thing. So, you know, almost making up a prescription for a farm and telling a farmer how he needs to treat crops and that sort of thing. There's plenty of uh, women involved in that sort of space now and there's certainly room for more. I think in this day and age, um, there has to be more hands on to be able to get the work done and get the jobs done. So, yeah, I think in, in time it's going to end up you know, we'll have far more women doing those leadership type roles on farms than traditionally has been. 
how do you feel about you know one or more of your girls staying and getting involved yeah, in farming? If that's what they wanted to do, then no worries. We're actually seeing more and more girls do ag science coming out of Cummins. Like there's been quite a few in the last few years that have pursued that as a career, and that's thanks to um, yeah we've got an awesome female ag teacher and science teacher, and they these girls are giving it a go. It's it's great. I think here at Cummins we probably have. Um, just as many girls wanting to do ag and being excited about ag, especially our livestock side of things. Um, over the years, more and more girls have become aware of um, yeah, what they can do. And I guess here at Cummins, we offer programs that males and females can both do. So mm. yeah, I guess it's just exposing kids to that. I don't know anyone around here who's got to grow up with girls getting involved with, with, with ag. And you know, a lot of times they'll probably pick stuff up quicker than some, some of the males. It's about making learning fun and finding ways to encourage them to, to be excited about those topics and those subjects. And, um, and I guess that's what I love about ag is that we, we can get practical about how we do things and by being able to, I guess, put maths or science into a, um, an everyday context. Um, you know, whether it be vegetables or working with sheep or whatever it might be, um, being able to see it in a real life situation certainly helps keep their enthusiasm, I guess, for those sorts of things. Probably seven or eight years ago, I had several classes that were all boys and now we're seeing more and more girls come through and not just doing it here at school, but are wanting to go on and do ag um, at a tertiary level, which is really exciting. If I think about the last few years, there's probably been more going through Year 12 looking at pathways into agronomy and, and other areas of agriculture than we've ever had before. And I think the advantage that agriculture now has is a lot of that traditional, you know, the perception around it being physical and, and possibly more suited to men because of that. I mean, we're dispelling that myth and we're saying, look, you know, there's great opportunities in a, in a range of avenues out there. I mean, even just in our area here, there's, there's more women being involved in consultancy roles and, and things like that. But also there's lots of farmers' wives around here that are undertaking like agribusiness courses and things like that, just so that they, I guess, have the knowledge to be able to help and yeah, just opening up doors that they may not have known were possible. Join us in episode seven, which takes a closer focus on males' perspective in the gender equality conversation. We look at programs and critical conversations required to dispel some of the male stereotypes that are currently holding back our boys and limiting the participation of men in gender equality outcomes. To stay connected and informed as we roll out this series, please like us on our Facebook page and you can re-watch any episodes either via our website or on the Channel 44 website. <laughs>